Hello and welcome to The Thrifty Author. I'm your host, Gail C. Martin, and today we're talking more about Social Media 101 from the book, Social Media and Virtual Apps for Authors. And today we're talking about creating your virtual platform. Now, there's a kind of catch-22 out there in the publishing world that publishers want to see you have a following before you've got a book. And they're more likely to look kindly on giving you a contract if you already have a following. How do you have a following without a book? How do you get a book without a following? It's just kind of one of those circular logic things. And whether or not you're going for traditional publishing, gathering a following for, to your platform is what enables you to stay in touch with your readers as you are getting your first book ready in between books, when you want to let the people who already like your work know there's more of it coming. So, Having a platform is important, whether you are big traditionally pubbed, small press, or indie. Sooner or later, it really matters that you have been able to gather people who like what you write. And the truth is, the sooner you can do it, the better. Now, how do you create a platform before you even have a book? It's not just about talking uh, about, oh, one of these days I'm going to write this book. Think about the things that you really enjoy might be hobbies, it might be certain genres, it might be a type of sports. Those are things even better if they are part of the book that you're writing, but not necessarily. Those are things you love. They are natural things that you enjoy. That's where you are your authentic self when you're talking about them. That's a good place to start whether it is creating a Facebook page or, or group, whether that is creating a, um, a blog or a YouTube channel where you talk about the things that you really love. You know, maybe it's geocaching, maybe it's parachuting, whatever it is, start talking about that. And if it's something that you weave into your writing even better, every now and then throw in, and I'm working on a book where and then give people the tie-in. As people get to know you and connect with you in the group about something that is a shared passion, a lot of them will wish you well on your project. And they may even ask, hey, how's that book coming? When you finally have the book ready to come out, you can also say, you know that book I've been talking about? Well, it's coming out on whatever the date is. And if you're interested, come take a look. You might be surprised at how many of those people Take a look for curiosity's sake and then say, hey, you know, this really looks good and give it a shot. That is a great way to build an initial uh, body of readers beyond your personal circle of friends and family. And then you can parlay that into a reader group, into a fan page, into a following for a YouTube channel where the content is more specifically about your book, your world building, your stories, what's going on with your publishing. It takes time to build a following. So the sooner you start to create that presence online, the longer you have to get a fair number of people involved so that you can say, hey, I've been doing YouTube channel, uh, YouTube videos on this topic for a year and a half and I've got X number of subscribers or I've got X number of people in my group on Facebook and we all talk about this, which is related to my book thus. That's a great way to be able to show that you have a gathering of people who are very likely to go out and buy your book. And that's really what publishers want to see is that somebody besides your mother and your best friend and maybe your significant other know about this book and may do a bit of a table rush when it comes out. And of course, going forward, you want to attract people to your, your groups, your channels, whatever you're building, so that you can keep them in the loop about the next book, the next project, the next series, without just saying, buy my book. You want to engage in a very human way. And a great way to do that is to talk about the research that you're doing for the books. And maybe you have to travel to do that. Maybe you are doing some armchair travel. Maybe you're doing some historical research. 
Um, maybe you turn up weird, cool things as you're researching. Those are all great topics of conversation for this group that you're gathering around yourself that makes it so it isn't all about you and isn't all about selling books, but it is in the orbit of what you're writing. So if you're going to set a book in a certain city in a certain year, show people the research that you've done for that. Tell them the odd things that have turned up as you're doing this and always tie it back to, while I was, while I was doing the research for title of the book, look at this really cool thing that I found. And that can be sharing things from your own experience, that can be uh, reposting things from groups that deal with that area of expertise. All of those things make the book experience much richer and multifaceted for the people who like to follow your books so that they get more of a sense of reality, that they've been there, that they know what that looks like, that they have stood in that place even, um, you know, just, just on Google Earth, that they have, have seen that and now it's more real to them when you present it in your books. So some tips for building a gathering around yourself and uh, creating content to amuse and inform that gathering, either as you're getting ready to publish or as you're trying to build your publishing credits with uh, a loyal readership. Well, that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining us. There'll be more thrifty author coming up. So until then, we'll see you online.